Hi everyone, my name is Bhavesh and I like to teach a lot of cool stuff. Recently I've been getting super into MicroPython and what we're going to be learning today is how to use MicroPython on the ESP32 to grab some data from the internet and to display it in your application. There's this really awesome simulator called Wokwi, W-O-K-W-I, that lets you simulate MicroPython and simulate a microcontroller and so you don't even need to buy any hardware. Today you're here for ESP32 so let's just get right into that. So click on that in your Wokwi interface and if you're not familiar with this, just really quickly, this is the part where you write code and this is the part where you connect hardware and you can connect different hardware to it. Uh, today since we're playing mostly with the internet we don't actually need to connect any hardware so we're going to focus mostly on the code. And what I can do here is I can increase the font a bit or I thought I could. Uh huh. Hopefully that helps see what's going on. So we have a simple program here called, it's a, just a print hello world style program. So if you run it, we get hello ESP32. Great. That's awesome. Boring. Let's move on. Um, what we want to do is let's just connect to the internet first. And what I mean by connect to the internet or connect to the Wi Fi in this case is, since this is a simulator, you're not actually connecting to your home Wi-Fi. You're connected to a simulated Wi-Fi that the folks at Wokwi have set up. And we can get instructions from them on how to do that. So let's search the Wokwi document. Actually, it's much easier. Let's just go here. Documentation. Beautiful. And I'm going to search for ESP32 Wi-Fi networking. Beautiful. There it is. Oh, page doesn't exist. No. How about this one? Okay, cool. That's the link. I can, I'll put it down in the description so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and it shows how to do it from Arduino, which is not what we're doing because that's old hat. Let's do MicroPython, the cool new way of connecting to Wi-Fi. And honestly, I could go through this. You know what? Let's just go through it and at, at a higher level, understand what's going on. So it starts up by just printing connect to Wi-Fi. Then it makes this awesome variable called stat if, which makes no sense of course network.wlan network.stif okay you're probably wondering what language this is uh this is nerd language so wlan is wireless local area network or wi-fi and you're creating a wi-fi connection of the type star if or station interface if and what that is a lot of mumbo jumbo that just means that your ESP32 is going to be a station instead of a router or a modem. It's going to be a client, just like your phone is a station, your laptop is a station, everything is a station that's not your modem or your router. And then we're going to take our station interface and set it to active. And then we're going to connect to this simulated, emulated Wi-Fi network that Wokwi has created. So it has no password because it has no security, I suppose. And the SSID is Wokwi guest. And then while it's not connected, so we just kind of wait for it to be connected. We just keep printing dots, dot, 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 and then sleep for 100 milliseconds or 0.1 second, and then finally going to print connected. So that's like a quick rundown of what's going on. Let's copy it over and uh, see what happens. So yeah, just make sure to import the network and time libraries. And yeah, let's run it. Boom, connecting to Wi-Fi, dot, 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 dot. Da, 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 da. Connected. Awesome. Although all we did was just copy paste some code. So maybe I shouldn't be celebrating just yet. Now what we want to do is have some fun with it. Ooh, what do we do on the internet? We can grab data. We can grab some weather data. Maybe we can get some data about from the news or, but like, you know what? All of that's really boring. I think what's really awesome and funny is jokes. And we kind of grab some jokes today. So it's a really cool API, um, and by the way, API just means a very fancy word for when a website returns you data in a structured format, and uh, you get to access and play with it. So in this case, we're going to use joke API, surprise, surprise. It's at this link, v2.jokeapi.dev. I'll put the link in the description. <clears throat> joke API. It's a REST API that serves uniformly and well-formatted jokes. So it says nothing about whether these jokes are going to be funny or not, but that's okay. We're going to scroll down, blah, 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 blah. Try it out. 
Awesome. I love websites that let you try stuff out. I don't want to read it. Okay. Custom. So I'm going to choose programming jokes just because if I choose any jokes, there's like a super large amount of dark jokes here, which are super not YouTube friendly. So I'm just going to skip those for now. Blah, 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 blah. Nope. Select resp response format. JSON. So if you ever worked with JSON before, or if you haven't rather, it's pretty simple. It's you see it often in this like curly bracket format. So like you have a curly bracket and then you have like a topic and then a, a message. So for example, you could be, you could, if you had like a weather API, it'd be like curly bracket open today, colon rainy, and then comma temperature colon minus 20 degrees. Cause I'm in Toronto. Right. And then cur close curly bracket. And that would be like an example of a JSON payload. Um, and I'm just drawing shapes in the air. Maybe I should just show you. So let's, let's try it out. And it says select at least one joke type. So it's single or two part. I'm just going to go with both. That's fine. And amount of jokes one. Okay. So it's, it shows a URL down here, which is interesting. Let me zoom that in for you. Um, URL v2.jokeapi.dev slash joke slash programming. So it, it basically took all these options that I selected specifically the programming one is just the main one and uh, the default JSON layout and it created this URL. So I, what they're basically trying to say is like, if you type in this URL and actually this, we can try that. If you type it in over here, you should get a JSON formatted joke. Boom. So there's your curly braces and there's your keys. That's what they're called. So these are keys and these are your values. So category programming type two part. So in this case, we got a two part joke Setup. Why does no one like scroll X? He keeps dropping the data base. Ah, oh, this is a, uh, okay. Next joke. Um, another two part joke. Actually, let's just keep skipping through till we get like a one part joke. Okay. There we go. Type single. So you see this one's different. It has a joke. It just has a joke. It doesn't have like that setup and delivery. So we're going to need to handle that in the code when we get to it. So just keep that in mind. So here we go. Joke, honey, go to the store and buy me some eggs. Okay. Oh, and while you're there, get some milk. He never returned. Ah, okay. So the joke here is that this is a while loop joke. So while you were there, get some milk and he was always there. So he never returned. All right. Awesome. Good joke. I like it. Um, you might notice there's some weird like backslashes and thing imagings over here. So those are, those are called escape characters. So basically they let you do stuff like put in quotation marks inside your quotation marks. So you can quote while you quote. And, uh, over here, it lets you do stuff like, uh, put a new line character so that when you print this joke, it actually will add the, put each line on a separate line, which is, which is really awesome. And starting to make me think like, why didn't they just do that instead of having like a single joke and a two part joke. Uh, but anyway, we, we'll just play with it. So yeah, either you're going to get a joke that has a joke key where you can just print that out directly, or you get a two part joke where you get like a setup key where you need to print that first and then a delivery, which you need to print that second. Cool. Okay. That's the API. Oh, apparently I could have just done it over here. Let's try it. Oh, oh my God. All right. Anyway, your mama's so fat, she can't save files bigger than 4 GB. Ah, oh, that's an FAT file system joke. Anyway, we're going to see them in MicroPython. I don't want to click through more of them. So what we're going to do first is we need a library. We need a library to be able to grab stuff from websites. And that library is called, um, it is called you requests. And it's not like, it doesn't mean you request that like you, it's more like micro, like micro Python is like a mu in the Greek language, but we don't have a mu key on our keyboard. So we use you and it's really cute. And anyway, uh, in normal Python, so, or rather in C Python, Python three, for example, uh, you would just have a library called requests. And this is a re-implementation of that in micro Python. So it's like a kind of, um, you kind of have to do everything again in MicroPython, so I'm glad someone wrote this library. And it does more or less all the same things, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not all the same things. But for our 
for our purposes, this is more or less like using the same as the requests library in C Python. If you use, use that before, and what we're going to do is we're going to start out by getting, or rather than saying getting, like yeah, let's say get or download the joke. All right, and remember from before the this is the hyperlink that we're getting the joke from, right? So we are going to want the HTTPS as well in that, and we're going to say response equals u requests dot get and then we put our beautiful hyperlink in there <clears throat> okay so we're gonna get programming jokes but when you're doing this at home you can get all the dirty jokes you want i just don't want to you know pollute the internet it's already polluted enough and what we're gonna what we got here is this response object actually let's just print it because i'm not really sure what it looks like so let's just do that <clears throat> connecting to wi-fi and we're waiting for something ah okay that was a, oh connection aborted hmm i wonder if wakwi is down right now hello so i got a little bit impatient i didn't want to wait for wakwi to start working again so I actually pulled out the guts from one of my own ESP32 projects, which you can see down here. And I've set up my whole thing in my on my dining table, which I'm sure my girlfriend will be okay with. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just continue. Let's actually do this on a real ESP32 instead of a simulated one. I swear there's one in there. Cool. So here we are on a real ESP32, and. This plant somehow followed me here, which is great because I don't think you want to see the state of my living room right now. Uh, the ESP32 is actually in part of a NeoPixel project that I use for my home lights. And I'll do a, a video or a post about it soon so you can just see what kind of cool stuff you can do uh, when you have these beautiful real lights um, in, your, in your room. Uh, but for now, what I've done is I've taken the code that we had earlier, so I've just copied it verbatim. And I've moved it into the Thony editor. So T-H-O-N-N-Y, which I highly recommend. It's like the coolest uh, code editor specifically for doing Python or MicroPython uh, because it just lets you upload code right to the ESP32 without having to like fiddle with command line instructions. So it's, it's just really awesome. Um, and then you'll notice here, like I have the same code, but like I can't use, you know, Wakui guest as Wi-Fi. Like I have my own Wi-Fi, but I don't want to show you what that is, lest I get hacked, assuming some of you watching are people who live downstairs and want free Wi-Fi. So what I've done is I've moved my Wi-Fi password and username into this Python file called secrets.py. And I highly recommend this, how, this is how you do it too. So every time you make an IoT project, don't upload your Wi-Fi username and password to GitHub. Or like don't share that don't put it don't hard code it into your code basically have a little file called secrets of pi or something like that put it on your microcontroller don't put it anywhere else and just put your username and password in there so in this case i can imp uh, import it so i call them from secrets import wi-fi underscore not username sorry name and wi-fi underscore pass so basically, I just created two variables in that secrets of high file. It looks something like this. So I just did like a Wi-Fi underscore name equals blah, and then Wi-Fi underscore pass equals secret magic, right? Uh, that's all that other file is. There's nothing else in there. So I'm just I'm just grabbing those from there, so that I don't have to uh, upload this to GitHub, for example, or to show it to any of you because I don't really trust any of you. So. Let's just bring those in. So Wi-Fi name and Wi-Fi pass. And then everything else is the same. What we should see is we should connect to Wi-Fi. It should say connected. And then we should get our joke and print it out or print out this response from this website rather. So let's just hit play there. All right, connecting to Wi-Fi, internal error. Why doesn't anything work? Okay, I'm just gonna unplug the USB and plug it back in. I think the issue here is that you can't connect to Wi-Fi again and again, and we will look at a, a way of trying to solve that if possible. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, let's try it again. Connect into Wi-Fi. Dot, 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 dot. Connected. Response object at 3FF E6 or whatever. Okay. So, first of all, let's zoom that in a little bit. Huh. Let's try. Increase font size. Uh, it's shift command. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the Mac OS shortcuts. All right. So we can see down here that we got this VS. Um, we actually need to print it out in a way that can be represented. And in this case, since we were using a JSON representation for the data, Luckily for us, the uRequest library has a very simple method called .json, and that prints out the JSON. So let's try it again. So it's connected to Wi-Fi, and aha, there it is. So we have all our same keys and values as before. So it's a two-part joke this time, programming joke. And why is Linux safe? Delivery, hackers peek through Windows only, ha ha, hardy har. Okay, great. So one thing you might notice is that JSON, the format looks exactly like a Python dictionary, right? Like you have curly brackets, you have keys, and then you have values. So really, we should be able to just treat it like that. And we know the, the values that we're interested in. So if it's a single part joke, we just want the joke value. And if it's a two part joke, we want the setup and the delivery and we just print them out, right? So let's just assign that JSON to a dictionary. So let's say response, or uh, let's say a jo uh, whoops, joke dictionary equals response.json. And we're going to say, hey, here's a joke. And we're going to say if joke, so for a, for a single, um, Actually, you know what? We could just do this. We can say if type is this or that, right? So if joke dict type is a single, then we print out joke dict joke. <clears throat> so it has a key joke, which will have the value of the joke, right? And otherwise, we're going to print first the setup. So we're going to say setup, which is this part over here. Why is Linux safe? And we can actually have kind of like a little drum roll kind of thing. So we can just go print, dot, 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 dot. and then we can print the landing, the punch, what's it called? The delivery, the joke, the delivery. Aha, uh -huh. fantastic, I think. Let's try it. By the way, every time I run this, I'm actually getting a new joke. So it keeps uh, sending a request to that website. So don't abuse it. Like the website's being really nice. It's giving you free jokes. Just don't, don't like get a thousand jokes per second or something. They might ban your IP address. So just watch out for that, right? Okay, let's stop that and let's run it. Wi-Fi internal error. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna unplug the USB one more time <laughs> just to make the point. All right, uh, let's try that again. Connect into Wi-Fi. Connect. Here's a joke. A SQL statement walks into a bar and sees two tables. It approaches and asks, may I join you? Ha 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 ha. If you know databases, good for you. All right. So here's something interesting. Why didn't it print these dots? That's kind of bizarre, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe it's a single line joke with the new lines like it was before. That might be what it is. Okay, let's try it again. Let's try running another one. And connecting to Wi-Fi, connected. Here's a joke. This line doesn't actually do anything, but the code stops working when I delete it. Because <laughs> it's a comment. 
Okay, awesome. These are great, but these are just one-line jokes. I want to try the two-line joke, so I'm going to run that again. Bam, we're going to connect to Wi-Fi error again. Why? I wonder if there's a simpler, an easier way to do this. So if we go import main. Hmm. Interesting. So this is the... This is the Python interpreter right here, like a REPL, R-E-P-L, right? Where you can type in instructions and see them output values. And when I type in import main, I can actually, it basically pulls in this file. And what it seems like is happening is it doesn't like connecting to Wi-Fi more than twice. Like, I don't know if you notice if I scroll back. Uh, the first time it connects to Wi-Fi, it's super happy. It's like dot, 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 connected. And then the second time it connects to Wi-Fi, it's like connected to Wi-Fi connected. Like there's no there's no break even. It just immediately connects. And then the third time, it's like, error, why are you making me connect to Wi-Fi so often? I don't like it. And you know, I, I would actually like to investigate this or if someone of you know why this very strange behavior happens where like it takes the third time for it to break. Um, but for now, what I'm gonna try to do is get around it. So the way to get around it is to not keep connecting to Wi-Fi again and again. So just do that once and then give us the ability to, to run this joke API again and again. And yeah, what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to wrap this up in a function. So I'm going to say define uh, say joke, right? And we're going to tap all that in. And the idea is I'm going to import main and then I'm just going to keep running the command say joke, say joke to get a new joke every time. And I hope that works. Um, whoops, so let's try to save that. So one last time, let's unplug and replug this USB. <clears throat> Back in terminator or disconnected, click stop, yes. I don't really follow the rules on that one, do I? Okay. I wonder if it'll just work right away. So if I say import main and then main dot say joke module has no attribute say joke. Hmm. I think I need to I need to save it once. So let's let's run it. Connecting to Wi-Fi connected. Okay. Import main main dot say joke huh what is going on here i think it has an old version of the file so i'm gonna hit save as so that's command shift s save it on a micro python device main.py okay let's overwrite it wonderful I wonder if that works. Let's go import main. <laughs> okay, I guess we connected to Wi-Fi. Then main dot say joke. Aha! Yes, awesome. Okay, so this plan works. Here's a joke. Why did the programmer quit his job? Because he didn't get a raise. A raise. Oh my God. Aha. Okay, let's get another joke. Main dot say joke. Yes, it works. Hey baby, I wish your name was asynchronous, so you would give me a call back. <coughs> like it. So that's it actually for today. You have <laughs> a joke API. You learned how to do it in the simulated environment for the most part, and you also learn how to do it on your own environment. And as a bonus you learned how to hide your Wi-Fi username and password from your GitHub repository the next time that you want to upload one of your projects or share it with someone. And uh, you learned about this IDE, which is fantastic. Tawny IDE lets you flash your code, lets you run it on a real ESP32. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time with more MicroPython secrets. If you are interested in the more foundational tutorials on MicroPython, so if you want to learn how to play with NeoPixels or LEDs or temperature sensing, or so many other projects, I do teach those tutorials, and I teach them on my website at bhave.sh, which is my first name. And right here you see 
have some awesome tutorials. This last one was a YouTube video as well. Uh, this one is a really popular one, NeoPixels. You scroll through, you get to see examples of how you can use the code. You get to see code itself. And I also explain the hardware connection, the theory of uh, the project in this case, which would be color theory. So I really hope you check it out, bhave.sh. Follow if you'd like to see more tutorials. Bye for now.